So episode Revenant is going to be launching in Destiny 2 this coming week on the 8th of October. This is only the second episode that Destiny's had. So of course, there's a lot of anticipation in the community, both for new content, but also to see if episodes can offer anything out of the ordinary or anything different, perhaps from what we saw in Echoes. So we'll be discovering all of that in the days to come. But in this video, I wanted to round up a handful of useful information about episode Revenant. And that includes new exotics, new rewards, weapons, Armor, activity content, and more associated with Revenant. That includes the new dungeon as well. But also, we'll talk about quality of life changes, sandbox updates, system reworks, and that will include the power increase, but also Pathfinder updates, exotic class item changes, adjustments to activity rotations, nightfalls, lost sectors. And of course, there's a significant sandbox update alongside this next episode. So if you want the quickest possible breakdown of all of the info that we currently know for the Revenant update, hopefully we'll be able to to deliver that in the video. If you guys enjoy this one, a rating below very much helps us on the channel. But without further delay, let's get into it. And so starting out, let's talk about new rewards up front. If you watched Bungie's live reveal earlier in the week, you'll know about the Zerf board, which is a new exotic skimmer coming to the game. Of course, it's been a while since we have one introduced, but this one will be a reward from... Now that's a surprise. Interesting that it's going to drop from the vendor. Of course, we'll be able to purchase it with 97 strange coins, but Bungie you do outline that the surfboard skimmer will be available beginning in week two of the episode. And again, it'll be up for 97 strange coins and will continue to be part of Zer's multivarious strange offers page until purchase. So that's where you need to look if you want to pick the skimmer up. And the second Zer visit should land on the 18th of October. So be sure to stock up on some strange coins before he arrives if you want to grab that. Otherwise though, a couple of other exotics we know about. Icebreaker is returning. This is going to be the dungeon exotic. So for most of us, we'll be relying on RNG or a final boss drop for this thing. And what we know for the moment is that Icebreaker now regenerates ammo on kills and assists with a magazine of 10 rounds. So there won't be passive ammo regen, but by continuing to kill stuff while we have the weapon equipped, it will get its ammo back. Plus, Bunchy have said that there will be a stasis component to this weapon as well, but they haven't yet revealed precisely what that will be. The other exotic we know about, though, is the Alethanim, if that's how you say it. This will be the Season Pass reward, so the first one we'll get access to. And the weapon fires a Harvest to Spike projectile, and dealing final blows with the weapon creates a single vestige at the target's location, and impaling more powerful targets from projectiles will create a steady stream of vestiges. And with those vestiges, the weapon will gain energy, and if we long press reload with at least 50 percent energy, the next projectile we fire will create ammo bricks, and 50% will produce a special ammo brick, while 100% will produce a heavy ammo brick. So kind of an interesting idea right there. Plus, we will be getting new exotic armor for this episode, which is nice. Of course, we've seen the odd season where we haven't had new exotic armor, so it's good to know that we are going to get these. I'm assuming that we'll be focusing for these at the Cryptarch, as we have been with the final shape. That's what Bungie suggested when they announced that change. So Raul will be the one to go to in order to pick these up, but you can see them on screen right here, thanks to some previews that we had earlier in the week. We won't go over all of the exotic bonuses, but feel free to pause the video and read away at those armor perk descriptions. Otherwise, though, the previews in the last few days have given us a quick glance at some of the new weapons that we'll be able to get. These are the legendary weapons from the Revenant set. So they'll be dropping from the Revenant activities. There's Liturgy, which is a double fire stasis grenade launcher, which looks pretty cool. There's also a new hand cannon. I'm not even going to try and say the name of that one. It's spare rations with some extra stuff stuck to it, but it's an aggressive frame stasis weapon. On top of that, though, we'll get the Vantage Point Pulse Rifle, which is an adaptive frame arc pulse. The insurmountable sidearm, which is a precision frame void sidearm, and then the sovereignty, which is an adaptive frame void sniper. Plus, there are some new traits, like the Dark Ether Reaper origin trait, and kills with a weapon periodically spawn Dark Ether charges, and charges can be detonated early with weapon fire or by coming into contact with them, and doing so refills the weapon from reserves. So, that sounds like a pretty good trait, to be fair. Plus, there's a new perk called Lone Wolf, and this slightly improves aim assist, aim downside speed, and airborne effectiveness, and that effect will increase when. And there are no nearby allies. The Withering Gaze trait allows aiming the weapon for a short period without firing to grant the ability to apply Void Weaken to the next target we damage, and the timer resets after firing or exiting zoom. Plus there's Jolting Feedback, and dealing repeated damage with the weapon inflicts Jolt, and while amplified, Jolt is applied faster. Then finally we have Closing Time, which improves range, accuracy, and handling as the magazine gets lower, and Rhyme Stealer, where destroying a Stasis Crystal or defeating a frozen enemy with the weapon grants you Frost Stun. 
armor. So a few of those bonuses actually sound pretty unique and interesting. I'm sure we'll find some of those perks on new dungeon weapons as well. And there's a new dungeon called Vesper's Host, which is launching on the 11th of October. So that's at the end of the first week of the episode. Keep in mind, we still need the final shape dungeon key in order to access this one. Bungie will be doing away with the dungeon keys next year when the Apollo expansion drops. But there'll be a 48 hour contest mode. And the thing to keep in mind right here for the dungeon is that we'll need to be at at least 1985 power in order to be at the cap through all of the encounters. And we need to acquire the quest Rogue Network, which we'll find at Spider in the Last City Seasonal Hub. And this seasonal hub, located in the tower, or Last City at least, will kind of mix things up instead of going to the helm. And as far as we understand it, that's where we'll find elements like the potion crafting system, which will be a key part of the sort of reward stream for Episode Revenant as well. On to other items though, there will be a power increase for Revenant. And Bungie have said they'll once again be increasing power caps by 10 on an episode to episode basis. So for Revenant, the power floor is 1900, soft cap is 1950, powerful cap 2000, and hard or pinnacle cap is 2010. So a bit of work on the power front. If you're not really feeling doing any power leveling, at least going into the initial launch for the episode, it probably won't be a big deal if you're already around about the max level for the game right now. Perhaps later on in the episode, there could be some more challenging content that requires a higher power level, but you could probably more or less ignore that power level increase if you wanted to, and it wouldn't have a super significant impact, at least not in the first few weeks. Other quality of life and sandbox updates though, and Bungie will be breaking out the Pathfinder cards per activity for rituals. So Crucible, Gambit and Strikes will now have a separate Pathfinder tab instead of mixing all of the objectives up. That's a positive. Also, we are going to get exotic class item attunement. And so for a given class, we'll be able to go into the attunement menu and attuning to a perk will increase the chance for exotic class items to drop with the selected perk, but only one perk may be attuned to at a time. But if there are a couple of roles that you've been going after on exotic class items and haven't picked up yet, attunement will be a good option to potentially help us complete the collection or get those specific roles that we're after, considering that these have been out for a few months now. Other changes though include that Bungie will be increasing the amount of raids and dungeons featured in the weekly rotator. So for example, on the week of October 8th, that's the launch week for Revenant, Last Wish and Vow of Disciple will be featured for the raids. And then for dungeons, we'll see Shattered Throne and Duality all featured at the same time. So four of those endgame activities now featured with farmable rewards, and that will be a consistent thing on a weekly basis. So at least there'll be more weekly options if you're still trying to catch up using those rotators. Plus Bungie have outlined adjustments to Nightfall focusing, and they say for non-adept Nightfall weapons, the drop chances have been increased in advanced, expert, and master Nightfalls when earning platinum and gold tier completions. And alongside that change, non-adept Nightfall weapons are now guaranteed to drop when completing a platinum run in a master Nightfall, and have a 50% chance to drop if it's a gold completion. There's also an update to the Nightfall focusing costs. So the weekly featured Nightfall weapon will cost one Vanguard Engram and a Nightfall Cypher, with the weekly Adept Nightfall weapon costing a Vanguard Engram, 50,000 Glimmer, and 10 Nightfall Cyphers. On top of that, Bungie have said that new World Pool weapons introduced for Revenant will be farmable in Lost Sectors immediately, or at least with a daily rotation from the start of the episode. So if there are any World Weapons that you want to chase down after this launch, is, keep in mind, we're going to have chances for those from Lost Sectors from day one, which is good. And here for a final mention, you may have noticed I haven't gone into a bunch of detail about weapon sandbox changes, exotics and things like that, as that list is pretty significant and we've separately covered them. So I'll link two different blog posts down below that have all of those details if you want to find out the specifics. But Solitude will be returning as a PvP map for Revenant as well. Wouldn't you say they've made some small changes to geometry and spawn locations, but this map will immediately be available in competitive and 6v6 modes as soon as the episode goes live. So there we go, guys. That's about the most comprehensive breakdown I could possibly do for Revenant in a short space of time. Of course, story-wise, new activity content and things that we'll discover throughout the course of the episode, like exotic missions a bit later on, are things that Bungie haven't done significant reveals for just yet. So we'll kind of leave that and enjoy it when we actually get into the game, I suppose. But otherwise, let us know your thoughts and any bits of content, updates, or new rewards that you're looking forward to chasing in Revenant. If you've enjoyed the video, a rating below really helps us on the channel. Plus, get subscribed if you want to be kept up to date with everything related to the game. But otherwise, cheers for tuning in, and I hope you guys have an awesome day.